So now we're going to talk about the properties of two um, somewhat special integers, 1 and 0. So the first thing you're going to need to know about the number 1 is 1 times any number n is equal to n. Pretty sure that's pretty intuitive. 1 times 25 is 25 because when you think of multiplying, um, it's basically just, um, I guess you could say, 2 times 2 is 4 because you're doing 2 2 times. So 25 one time is just 25. So for 0, if you have 0 times any number n, that's just going to be equal to 0. Um, now, there's another property that you need to know. So if you have n times 1 over n, that equals 1. So that's very helpful um, when using fractions because 5, oops, that's a bad 5. There we go. 5 times 1 over 5 is equal to 1. So that can be used, um, let's say if you have a 5 in the denominator, let's say you have x over 5. And then if you want to get rid of this 5, you can multiply by 1 over 5, and you can multiply the top by 1 over 5. That's going to cancel out, and you're going to get 1 in the denominator, and now you have 1 fifth x. So that may not have been the best example, but basically it just shows how if you need to eliminate the denominator using that rule, you can. Um, let's see, and then another property of 1, we have n over n. Here, sorry, one second, let me erase some of this. There we go. Okay, back to the properties. Um, one more property of, of n, or I'm sorry, of 1, is n over n is equal to 1. So any number divided by itself is 1, because any number divided into that many groups is just 1. So 25 divided into 25 pieces is just 1. Um, let's see, so now some other properties of 0 you need to know. Um, let's see n plus 0 is equal to n because any number when you add 0 to it it's just itself and then another one that you're going to need to know is n divided by 0 is undefined this is very important when it comes to slopes of lines um, because 0 over n is actually equal to 0 so a, if a line has a slope with a zero in the numerator, the slope is going to be zero. But then if a line has a zero in the denominator, it's going to be undefined. So that's why you'll see that horizontal lines have a slope of zero, but then vertical lines have, a, have an undefined slope. Um, so I think that pretty much covers the properties that you need to know of one and zero. Um, I will go ahead and box these, but be sure, I know these are kind of intuitive, but be sure that you have them, you know, just fresh in your mind for when you're taking the test because it's going to make it's going to make your life a lot easier. Oops, that's not a very good box, but you guys got the picture. OK, let me go ahead and erase this and then we're going to move on to prime numbers. Let's see if I can do this the easy way. Oh, that's good enough. Erase this. Sorry guys, I should have just paused the video. I'll do that next time. <laughs> okay, back to what I was doing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about prime numbers. So prime numbers have factors um, that are one and itself. So um, I don't think I've talked about factors yet, but factors are basically numbers that are evenly divisible into a number. So the factors of four are two and two. Um, also 4 and 1. I probably shouldn't have written it like that, um, but basically you can keep going. This is, this is called prime factorization. You can break every number down into a product of prime factors. Um, so let's see, so where was I? Okay, so, so 4 for example, the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. So 4 has three factors. If you take a number like 2, on the other hand, the only factors of 2 are 1 and 2. Um, so I would say I would recommend memorizing the first six prime numbers, and those are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. Maybe even more, but I would say at least know those first six ones. And notice that 1 is not prime. Um, one really only has one factor so that's why because all of the prime numbers have two factors and it's one and itself 
one only has one, so therefore it's not prime. So I think that covers prime numbers. Um, let me go over prime factorization really quickly. So prime factorization is, let's say you take a number 24. So prime factorization is the process of breaking this down into its prime factors. So let's see, we have six and a four. Those are just two factors. You don't have to choose six and four. Those are just two that came to mind. It doesn't matter when you're prime factorizing because at the end, you're gonna break it all the way down into its factors. I'll actually show you how it can be, how, how it would be the same in a second. So four, we have two and two. Since those numbers are prime, we're gonna stop there. For six, we have three and two. Those are also prime, so we're gonna stop there. So the prime factorization of 24 would be three times two times two times two or three times two to the third power. Um, I haven't gotten to my video on exponents yet, but just know that that's the case for now. Okay, now I'm gonna show you why you can pick any factors. So let's say you have 24 and you're like, oh, but Nicole, 12 and two is a factor of 24, or are factors of 24. So let's go with that. So 12 and two. Two is prime, so I stop there. 12 can be broken down into six and two. Six can be broken down into three and two. So again, when we look at our prime factors, we got the exact same thing. We got three times two times two times two. So that should pretty much explain um, that with prime factorization, it doesn't matter which factors you choose first. So that's actually it for today. Um, and just please email if you have any GMAT tutoring requests. Thanks for watching. The explanatory consecutive integers are just integers that come, you know, one after another. So zero, one, two, 